It's spooky season. Welcome to Taste for Adventures series on pumpkin beers. Pumpkin isn't isn't that a fad that had that can't have been around for a long time. Pumpkin spice, this you know lattes. You got pumpkin spice, probably hard seltzers even maybe. <laughs> yes, uh, pumpkin remains probably one of the most divisive controversies in all of mm -hmm. craft beer. You either love it or you hate it. There doesn't ever really seem to be a middle ground. Yeah. So uh, we have this brand new series on pumpkin beers and pumpkin alcoholic drinks kind of in general. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to really do a deep dive into the style, taste a lot of different pumpkin beers uh, in this series, and give you our uncensored opinions <laughs> on all of them. Yeah. We've got uh, Sam Adams Jacko. We've got Whole Hogs Pumpkin Beer, um, New Holland's Ichabod, and by Dogfish Head, we have Pumpkin. But uh, before that, how, how long have pumpkin beers sort of been around? Just kind of curious about that. Yeah, so contrary to common belief, uh, it is not just a, a quick little fad. They've definitely been a lot, we've, they've seen a resurgence in popularity mm -hmm. over the last decade or so. But pumpkin beers have a very long history. See, I'm wearing yeah, my... Yeah, uh, you're pretty colonial there. That's right, my, my colonial uh, renaissance... Uh, uh, revolutionary style mm -hmm. coat here that we uh, all have that's right of course mine's yeah. the cleaners you know, so, yeah. <laughs> it's not just my halloween <laughs> costume i wore it to underscore the fact that before we had modern modified malts mm -hmm. uh people brewed with what they had uh, sure. available to them sure so uh you know you had a lot of thirsty colonists back in the uh, late 1700s mm -hmm. and uh one of the things most uh readily available was different squashes and pumpkins and things yeah, so, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot of pumpkin beers back in the early days. Um, even George Washington himself uh, is uh, said to have brewed a pumpkin beer. Oh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, really, um, they were very popular back in the, uh, like I said, the, the late 1700s. They did fall out of style for a little bit. And then in the late 1980s, Buffalo Bill's Brewery uh, has actually been credited for uh, coming up with the first pumpkin craft beer in the sort of modern era. That's interesting. And then as we know, uh, many, many, many more breweries have followed suit. And uh, there's even a brewery out there that's doing uh, pumpkin whiskey, and it has a whole, oh boy. whole bunch of pumpkin beers that we'll get into later in this series. Okay, great. Well, from thirsty colonists to uh, thirsty college kids, do you want to start off with the uh, Sam Adams Jacko? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, cool. All right. All right, well, cheers to uh, to our first beer in this pumpkin series. Yeah, cheers. All right, so Sam Adams Jacko. Uh, Sam Adams, uh, I think, also has a long history of doing pumpkin mm -hmm. beer. It's, it's available in six packs every year. It's always available in their fall like mix pack mm -hmm. so I thought that was a good place to start off with yeah I think so uh, that's something that I'm hoping our viewers at home can uh, maybe even sample along with it and pick up some of the same things yeah. that we are yeah hopefully um, your local craft beer store will have uh, a lot of these available for you yeah, and if not, um, you know, we're hoping to uh, introduce you to several new beers that might be a little bit hard to find, but then also balance that with beers that uh, are easier to find coast to coast. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm going to take a whiff here, and yeah. boy, I'm getting a lot of spices here. A lot here. of, yeah, like a savory pumpkin pie kind of spice seasoning. A little bit of sweetness, I think. A lot yeah. of cinnamon. A lot, a lot of, cinnamon of cinnamon in that. Um I'm getting like some like nutmeg and allspice, yeah. like those type of spices. Not really any clove or ginger, which are, are common in pumpkin pie spices. Yeah. No, pretty good though. Yeah, and definitely some pastry quality to it as well. Some of the yeah. sweeter like pie crust. Yeah, I think so too. I've definitely I've definitely eaten a pumpkin pie like this before. Yeah. Going down the, the BJCP score sheet, right, yeah. um, this would actually be judged in the autumn seasonal beer category. There's, okay. not, um, there's not a category just for pumpkin beers that falls within the BJCP autumn seasonal beer. Okay. Uh, and we're going to do a deeper dive into that on another uh, episode yeah, sure. in this, in this playlist. Yeah. Um, and really, they should have uh, flavors of uh, fall, and including all the pumpkin pie spices, but the spice should be in balance with the base beer. Um, now, 
for my palate, I think this is a bit heavy-handed on the spice. Oh yeah. I'm getting like really kind of a lot of spice. I think so. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I would say pretty spice forward. The pumpkin's definitely there, but yeah, pretty pretty spice forward. I almost feel that if if you cut this with another like a neutral like maybe you take Sam Adams Boston Lager, okay. you know, it's just take like a like a. a not like a super light beer, but yeah. just kind of like a more middle of the road beer and, and mix it, I think it, it might be better if it was cut down a little bit. Because I like the flavors in here. They're just all like hyper focused. Right. It's like pumpkin beer concentrate. That's that's a good way to put it, I think. Yeah. You wanted pumpkin, boy, you sure got it. Yeah, definitely. So aside from being pretty heavy on the spices, um, I think it has a nice like underlying fruity quality to it. Um, that could be yeah. from the yeast that they use. I'm could getting be. some esters in there. Uh, really no hops, no bitterness. No, not at um, all. Really no bitterness at all, no hop flavor. A um, little bit of that pastry maltiness, yeah. light esters, and just tons and tons yeah. of pumpkin spice. Yeah, it's got a really nice orangey color to it. And it's not quite transparent. It's more on it's more on the transparent side of opaque, but it's it's still pretty. Uh, can't really see through it all that well. Yeah, it's fairly clear. I, this is probably what a judge would call um, mostly clear. Like it's not even. I wouldn't call this hazy. Definitely not like cloudy or opaque. No. But it's not brilliantly clear either. Right. So. Yeah, you can't see right through it. Right. And that's pretty common in in a beer that has um, spices and things. Yeah. Um, just because the spices are going to make it a little bit more cloudy than um, a beer that wasn't spiced at all. Yeah. To me, I think it's it's way too overly spiced, but the flavors that are there, mm -hmm. um, I think, are pretty good. Just too concentrated. Yeah. I would blend this beer with something else if I wanted think, if I wanted to enjoy yeah. it. What about you? I um. I I think I I think Sam Adams they're they're. Fairly large American company. They're huge. I think that they're billed as the, uh, yeah. the largest craft beer company in America. I, I think what they're going for with this beer from a, a consumer market is exactly what they're striking at. It's like, hey, you want pumpkin? <laughs> we got, we got you. We got you a pumpkin beer. Yeah. I personally like it, um, and probably for all the reasons why you maybe would ding it a little bit. It's very spice forward. Really pumpkiny, really, really kind of pumpkiny, pumpkin pie, in a bottle. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I like that. I, I like what they're. I like what they did here. Yeah, and it definitely has a lot of that pumpkin pie and and very spice forward mm -hmm. aspect. Um, I think in a beer competition it will get dinged because it's not it's not in balance. You know, no. if you take the spices away, the I don't know what the base beer is even like at all because the spices are just too much at the forefront right but if you're if you're looking for a punch of pumpkin flavor mm -hmm. um this is definitely uh you could definitely do much worse than yeah this. if you're at a bonfire if you're you know at a, at a beer tent at a, at a halloween thing then yeah this this would be definitely i think right in the strike zone for you you're trying to get festive with this is this is a very festive beer not to be confused with a fest beer no 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 <laughs> Uh, and uh, if you want to learn more about Fest Beers, we have a whole other playlist. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually just wrapped up our series on October right. Fest Beers. Yep. Do you think yeah. um, Do you think Whole Hog might have something better for us in the pumpkin ale category? I'd love to find out. Well, Is that what's up next? I think that's up next. All right, let's do it. All right, so Whole Hog Pumpkin Ale. Um, I don't know too much about Whole Hog, and I don't even know really how widely available it is. No, of the of the beers we've got on selection tonight, uh, this is the one brewery I really have never heard of. It's out of Wisconsin, I think we read. Yeah, Wisconsin brewery, um, apparently not super well known, because uh, you know I grabbed it at the local liquor store here mm -hmm. in uh, Northwest Indiana. Right. Um, but uh, I don't think I'd seen anything else really from Whole Hog before. No, Sam Adams, kind of everybody knows, and then New Holland and Dogfish Head, I think are both pretty popular in the area. Yeah, I think they're pretty widely distributed as well. Sure. So, so. Um, this is maybe more like the local craft offering. See what a yeah. see what a smaller brewery to, uh, uh, take on pumpkin beers. Like. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know how widely available this is. If if, if you can find this, please let us know. Yeah. So I'm getting a pretty similar sweet spiciness in the nose. 
So to me, the nose is all um, canned pumpkin or the pumpkin that mm-hmm. is in pumpkin pie. I think not so. a roasted pumpkin, not a fresh pumpkin. It's you open the can of pumpkin and just yep. stick your nose that's in there. It. And that's yeah. that's what I'm getting. Yeah, it's got a pretty, pretty okay clarity, I think. It's got a very dark orange color to it. Yeah, um, kind of a kind of a copper amber color to it. I would I would call this pretty clear. I think it's more clear than the Sam Adams was. I think so. Yeah. I would I would agree with that one hundred percent, wholeheartedly. Ah, so uh, I, I'm getting a little bit more malt than I was on yeah. the Sam Adams as well. A um, little bit of like a maybe like a molasses or brown sugar mm-hmm. quality to it. Yeah, um, there's a lot of sweetness in the nose. On yeah. This. Yeah, but whereas the Sam Adams was more of like a like a pumpkin pie pastry sweetness, this mm-hmm. is more of like a like a canned pumpkin and uh, brown mm-hmm. sugar sweetness. Yeah, I think so. There's almost like a little bit of like an acrid almost like bitterness. It's not like a hop bitterness, I don't think. Yeah, there is there is kind of like a interesting sort of tang almost on the mouth feel. Right. Yeah, immediately when it hits your tongue, there's there's a little something else there. You know, some malts will do that. Um, okay. Munich malts or acidulated malts can have a little bit of like that interesting sort of character to it. Um, it could also be um, the way they built the water because. I'm not necessarily getting any like, like hot bitterness or any real weird, like adjunct quality like flavor to it. But there is there is kind of a, an abnormal flavor. Yeah, it, there's something off for sure. It's it's not terrible. And I think as it warms up, it mellows out a little bit too. Yeah. Because it's not. It's either that, or I'm just getting used to the used to it. No, I think it. I, I honestly think it's a little bit of the, the mineral quality of yeah. the the water. I'd be interested to see or ever learn. Yeah. Um, what the um, you know, what the source water is for for whole hog? Because I yeah. think that might be playing a part in in the overall impression here. Yeah. If it's Lake Michigan water, then maybe. You know, actually, Lake Michigan water is considered one of the better uh, brewing waters uh, just for the, the mineral content, especially for yeah. kind of a mid-color beer like this. Yeah. That's as long as it's treated. Well, <laughs> I'm sure they didn't go out there and just get bucket after just, bucket yeah, of unfiltered sure, lake yeah. water. <laughs> you kind of lose that pumpkin pie uh, quality in the taste. That you have in the nose, you lose it in the taste. Um, yeah, kind of gets overtaken by that sort of dry, cinnamony, sort of uh, mouth feel that uh, I think, you know, I think I think a lot of pumpkin beers kind of fall into that trap. You know, and there's not as there's not quite as much residual sweetness, and it's it's a fairly thin beer, so yeah. that m- leads me to wonder if maybe they did use actual brown sugar or molasses in that. Possible. That can give it quite a, a strong aroma, but then really, really dry the beer out, and that could, uh, in part, um, play into what we're getting in the mouthfeel and the flavor. Okay. We're really, uh, we're really picking this beer apart. I guess and, uh, so. It's it's really not a bad beer. No, not at all. There's just a lot to uh, a lot to talk about. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah, even as even as I smell it while I'm taking that sip, I can I can get more of the sweet pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin pumpkin mix. It's not very highly carbonated. No. So it kind of falls flat on your tongue a little bit. Yeah. Um I, I feel like it would just... probably be a little bit better if maybe it wasn't quite as dry. Mm-hmm. And also, if it was maybe a little bit more highly carbonated, I think it would deliver some of those more delicate um, flavors yeah. and aromas better. Yeah, it really doesn't uh, foam up at all if you twirl it or yeah. spin it around or anything like that. I think even when I was pouring it, it wasn't really... Uh, 
Yeah, that I mean, there's carb. there's still some bubbles in there, but sure. it's it's really very low, very low carb beer. Uh-huh. Well, I finished my whole taster and I never winced through it, so. Uh... <laughs> no, decent beer, uh, decent beer all around. Yeah, I think good pumpkin offering for sure. Yeah, pretty unique. Um, I don't know where I where I'd put it. It was a very different beer yeah. from Sam Adams, and where Sam Adams was uh, to my palate, way overly spiced. I liked the um, okay. the pumpkin and spice element in it, but then there were some other things that were uh, that read as just a little bit off to me. Mostly like the residual sugars, gotcha. the mouth feel, and maybe the mineral content in the water mm-hmm. were um, maybe some points that I would I would mark it down on a bit if I was judging it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not a. I wouldn't say it's a very complex beer. You know, you you can get a you can get a burger from McDonald's. And it's going to be a completely different quality of burger than you would from like maybe a higher end sort of fast casual or, or something like that. Sure. Um, so definitely, I mean, two two pretty much I think starkly different beers. You've got something that's maybe more consumer accessible versus something that's more of a the thinking man's pumpkin beer. Kind of just the kind of just to turn a phrase. Sure. Sure. Okay, well, um, whole hog. I would definitely say that uh, it's it's an interesting sort of take on uh, the pumpkin beers. Mm-hmm. Probably worth uh, checking out and, and trying it. Yeah, I'd have more than one. Sure. Yeah, I would probably. I find this beer a little bit more interesting than the Sam Adams, and maybe it's because I've had the Sam Adams pumpkin offerings year after year so much Could be. that now, kind of as a as a craft beer. Um, Maybe maybe craft beer snob a little yeah, bit. Uh, maybe. I, I might look for um, some of the the smaller offerings, even if they might not be as refined as the Sam Adams. Mm-hmm. It does offer something a little bit different and and less overly spiced than, than like a Sam Adams. Yeah. Well, let's see if um, let's see if New Holland. Let's see if that's a small enough offering. For yeah. Them. So uh, Ichabod is uh, of course named after. Go back to my colonial <laughs> cup yeah. here. Uh, uh, named after a kebab crane from the Legend of Sleepy Hollow, mm-hmm. um, so uh, really, really cool named beer there, and uh, that one's been been around for uh, quite a while, as long as I've been drinking uh, pumpkin oh, yeah? beers. Yeah, so Ichabod, uh, kind of a perennial favorite. So uh, looking into digging into it, and uh, it's available in cans now too. So, oh really? Uh, yeah, we have Ichabod in a can. Perfect. All right. Yeah, it's got a really, really dark orangey kind of color to it. Yeah, really kind of pumpkin colored. I oh, mean, yeah. it, it's like that classic, very just mm-hmm. classic orange. Yeah. Super, super clear. Yeah, really heady too, which is actually kind of interesting. Yeah, it has a fair amount of head. It doesn't stick around forever, but no. um, even after it kind of goes down, it, it stays. Yeah. You can there's a nice little back. ring to it. Yeah. Now this is now this is more of like a regular, like just real pumpkin. I'm not really getting a lot of spiciness. I don't think. There's there's some spice there's some in there, there, but it's it's a lot more restrained. Yeah, well the well the last two was like a pumpkin pie. This right. is more like a uh, pumpkin, just kind of more of a more of a pumpkin spice kind of a thing. Yeah, um, I like this, the, and this this probably falls more in line with like the BJCP recommended, like mm-hmm. for an autumn spice beer where. The spices are absolutely there. They're detectable. They're present, yeah. but they're they're restrained. It's a lighter hand. They go in concert with the beer, and they don't just overtake the beer. Yeah, and I think we'll get more into the actual BJCP guidelines on further episodes in the series. Absolutely. Now this beer has a little bit more of a of a crisp flavor, a little bit mm-hmm. more um, probably acidity and and bitterness. Yeah, I'm, I'm picking that up. I mean, it has that. Yeah, it's it's crisp. This is, it tastes like it would go good on not a cold, but maybe just a lightly chilly fall like yeah. afternoon. Yeah. Early evening of a bonfire or something like that. Yeah. You're getting a bonfire ready, but you're having a few beers. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. I get more spice in the in the in the taste than the actual nose, but. Yep. I would I'd say it's definitely present in both for sure. Yeah. Now the beer itself, um, pretty pretty plain. I would put it on like a mm-hmm. maybe almost like an American amber, um, mm-hmm. or almost like 
even almost like a blonde ale, but then more of a red color. I mean, it's a it's has a certain earthy quality to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say it probably has some more like an earthy hop quality, and it is a bit more hoppy than the other two beers that yeah, we had for sure. But not in like a like a citrusy hop bomb yeah. way. But they're there almost more to balance out the malt provide a little bit of that bitterness and some like earthy herbal hop flavors as well mm -hmm. that go i think pretty well with this beer yeah this beer definitely works this is not pumpkin pie in a glass it is not no this no, is not, really no. an ale that has some pumpkin spices and pumpkin quality yeah. to it well, I think, I think with a lot of pumpkin beers, they get hung up on that pumpkin pie in a glass aspect. Right. Which, I mean, depending on who you are, you might really love, or you might be like, oh, this isn't... I wanted a pumpkin, not a pumpkin pie beer. I wanted a pumpkin beer. Yeah. But it's hard to say. Yeah, if you're looking for a pumpkin pastry beer or like a pumpkin pie in a glass, this is is not probably the right beer for you. Probably not. Um, but as far as uh, kind of a a good fall beer that has some pumpkin aspects to it yeah. um this is very well done i think with a lot of pumpkin beers you risk having a really drying effect i've definitely had some pumpkin beers where it's after i've drank it i'm like i feel like i need a glass of water yeah you know it's like all it's, the spices yeah and yeah. you really get that with that I, I didn't really get that as much with with this one the new holland yeah, I think uh, I think a light hand with the spice mm -hmm. um, also didn't dry it out and made it like yeah. you know, it's not a wizard's desiccation spell on your no, throat. Yeah. With all the spice, you know. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, I think it was a good offering. I think it was. I think they did a good job with this one. Yeah, uh, for me, I would say uh, in a lineup uh, flight, this would score higher in a beer competition than the other two yeah. because it is more imbalanced. You get some of the hop quality. Mm -hmm. um, the base beer is there, yeah. um, and the spices are restrained, which uh, I appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Take us home. What's the last one we got? The last one we have is Pumpkin from Dogfish Head, which is another another brewery that I'm familiar with. Yeah, I think Dogfish Head uh, pretty much distributes across the entire United States yeah. now. Uh, and Pumpkin is interesting because it's actually a pumpkin brown ale. Oh. Yeah, which we haven't, we don't really see much of. No, I was going to say, yeah. I don't, uh... yeah, that sounds interesting to me. Yeah, so uh, I think it's a it's a great one to uh, to finish this off and uh, be a little bit different than the other three, which were a lot more in the classic pumpkin amber category. Yeah, for sure. Well, let's let's get into that one. All right, Dogfish Head Pumpkin Ale says that it is a brown ale brewed with pumpkin, brown sugar, allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg. So a lot of the classic pumpkin pie spices. And as a beer judge, I always appreciate when a brewery lists the base style, which helps me to evaluate the overall beer. Yeah, no, that ma that makes sense to me. Um, I, I feel like it's a little wordy, you know. It's like all of these, when they could have said just the pumpkin pie spices, but I, I do appreciate that they they list sort of all the spices like that. In a yeah. Row. Um, whenever whenever a brewery lists, um, you know, the the ingredients or you know the the hops they use, I think that always helps to inform the taster or the beer judge to like to say oh okay you know i am picking up this particular type of hop especially mm -hmm. once you really understand all the things that go into a beer and start uh really kind of fine-tuning your palate it's yeah. really cool to find things that list that uh, but specifically uh also listing the base style yeah. i think is great because you know most of the time you say oh it's a pumpkin ale well what's the base is it a pumpkin blonde ale is it a pumpkin ipa is it a pumpkin stout so um, I really appreciate Dogfish Head said that it is a brown ale. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And well, they, I mean, this is partially a homebrew channel. Sure, There's yeah. homebrew aspects to it, especially. So if you wanted to maybe make a clone of this, you've got a good roadmap, I think. Absolutely, that's a wonderful point. Yeah, yeah. so um, if you ended up really, really enjoying Dogfish, uh, Dogfish Head Pumpkin, uh, you know, start with a good uh, brown ale recipe, and you know that you're going to have Pumpkin, brown sugar, allspice, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Yeah. 
So uh, there's still a lot of wiggle room in that, but it yeah. at least gets you in the ball. Well, it doesn't, yeah. I mean, it doesn't give you the ratios of the exact recipe on right. it, but you know, you got to keep something close to the chest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could always just get a, like a homebrew brown ale kit and then add some of those adjuncts into it. Yeah. That'll probably get you at least halfway there. Okay. Absolutely. Really kind of light for a brown ale, even though they say it's a brown ale, it's kind of the same color as the other ones I'll were. say, yeah, it's, it is, it, I, there's no real brownness to it other than the, the darkness of the orange, I guess. Yeah, so, that's really interesting, they called it a brown ale, mm -hmm. but it's, it's just as light as any other, any other, uh, the pumpkin ales, maybe the flavor uh, and, oh, otherwise, uh, yeah. beer profile will be more like a brown ale. I'm getting a lot of that pumpkin that we've been getting through all of the beers that we've had on today's episode. But uh, how do you know? Yeah, I uh, I'm definitely smelling in this. I've definitely smelled some just straight up brown ales that have a, a similar feel to this. Yes, this has. It's got that brown ale kind of. Um, it has like a nutty and yeah, yeah. Uh, almost more like an English brown ale, where it has almost a little bit of like toffee notes too that mm -hmm. should work really well with a pumpkin. I would say of the four that we've had, this is definitely the most malt forward, especially in the aroma. Yeah, I would say so. so looks pretty good. Nice head. Uh, really nice clarity. We commented on the color. So oh, yeah. uh, let me give this a sip and see what we got. Ooh, that's thick. That's much thicker, I think, than the ones we've had tonight. Yeah, it is. Um, I wouldn't call it like a super like full mouthfeel, but it's it's firmly like in the medium mouthfeel yeah. range. Where some of the others were uh, maybe even a little bit watery. This is also a seven percent AV, ABV beer, so uh, sometimes alcohol sense. can contribute to a little bit of uh, thickness yeah. as well. Pretty, pretty spicy. Like spice spices, not temperature. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting those spices firmly, more so in the flavor than in the aroma. Yes. It'd be nice if we had a little bit more of those in the aroma to invite us in. But yeah. um, definitely a lot more spice, uh, especially in the mid palate and into the aftertaste. Yeah. Now, I'm not really seeing, and, and maybe maybe correct me if I'm incorrect, but I'm not really seeing or, or tasting in this case uh, the, the brown ale qualities of this as much. I mean, other than it feeling a little bit thicker in my, in my mouth. It has some aromas of like a brown ale. Yes. Um, but yeah, you're right in the flavor. Um, I mean, I am getting some like mid-range like biscuity um nuttiness mm -hmm. but not like a base not like a brown ale really should be if it was entered as a brown ale category or if it was just a brown ale mm -hmm. um definitely lighter on the malt balance and complexity and, and intensity of malt flavors than a brown ale should be yeah And the pumpkin, again, is a little bit subdued. Yeah, um, this absolutely. isn't like the, the whole hog or the Sam Adams where they were just like kicking the teeth with a pumpkin. Mm -hmm. um, this is more along the lines of Ichabod where it's absolutely there, but it's, it's more restrained. Sure. Well, I feel like it goes the more pumpkin route than it goes the pumpkin pie route. Right. Which are two different things. Absolutely. Again, this is not pumpkin pie in a glass. No. This is a, an ale with pumpkin spices in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And neither one is, is right or wrong. Both both can be very good beers. Yeah. It's just different. You know, it depends on, you know, what you're in the mood for. What do you have a taste for? Mm -hmm. Do you want a dessert beer? Do you want something that you can have, you know, maybe with a fall meal and it doesn't overshadow the meal? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, you could probably you could probably eat this at like maybe a Thanksgiving or drink this at maybe a Thanksgiving or something. 
All in all, I think a really good offering from Dogfish Head on this one. Yeah. So we've had four beers that are all in the, the pumpkin beer. Uh, they're called pumpkin beers, mm -hmm. and they're all in the autumn spice beer BJCP category. Um, how would you rank them, or, or what stands out uh, to you as, as far as maybe your winner of the flight? You know, that, that it, it's going to fly in the face of what you said. I really liked the, uh, the Sam Adams approach to it. And, I mean, it makes sense. They're this giant craft brewery. Um, you know, they, they know what their they know what their demographic, I think, demographic is going to be. You know, you're, you're trying to make this accessible and enjoyable for a mass market. Um, you know, craft beer, it's expanding onto the scene. I mean, there's, mm -hmm. there's more craft breweries now than, you know, there ever have been, sure. really. Yeah. Um, more, it seems like more of them every day. Uh, but they definitely have that, they've definitely got a broad market approach, and I think that lends itself to the overall flavor of this. They're going for something specific. They're like, we think we know what the people who are wanting pumpkin beers are going for. Um, I did like that a lot. Um, the New Holland was really good too, though, I think. So I think if I had, you know, maybe a, a mass market pick, it would be the Sam Adams for this one. I think if it were... Maybe smaller, smaller brewery. Maybe the New Holland. I think would take it for me. Okay, yeah, and uh, I, I think that to me the New Holland Ichabod was a, a pretty clear winner. Yeah, um, it was really hard to pick it uh, pick it apart and find too much really yeah. wrong with it or too much I'd improve. Um, I thought Dogfish Head was nice, but um, sometimes. You know, we commented at the beginning of, of Dogfish Head saying, oh, isn't it nice that it listed that it's a brown ale? But that almost that almost hurt it because we were judging it as a brown ale, yeah. and it didn't really hit on any of the brown ale notes. No, not, not, not overtly anyway. Right. Yeah. So um, to me, it was definitely uh, the New Holland's Ichabod uh, that did it for me. And then I would put everything else as just like a step behind that, kind of even keel. Sure. I don't think there was a clear like worst beer out of the flight. Uh, no, not really. No, I, I liked everything we had tonight. I know we kind of railed on uh, Whole Hog a little bit, or at least it came off like we did, but it was an enjoyable beer for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess Sam Adams and Ichabod are our sort of co-winners uh, of Flight so. here, and, yeah. uh, but really uh, a pretty nice lineup, and we have lots more beers, lots more pumpkin drinks to try in future episodes on this playlist. So uh, keep an eye out. We'll be releasing a ton more pumpkin beer episodes throughout the whole month of October. Mm -hmm. So come back for more. And uh, happy Halloween. Welcome to Spooky Season. Whoa. <laughs>